This is QTV News coming to you live from our studios on Kairaba Avenue. I am Ashma Oba. Thanks for joining us. In a flurry of engagements at the State House in Banjul on Wednesday, President Adam Abaro Antonio Rudiger, German and real Madrid defender who is on visit to the Gambia. The Deputy Executive Director of the Medicines Control Agency tells us how new systems will ensure safety and efficacy, particularly of medicines from India. Gambian pilgrims who traveled with Tiwawan and Tiwawan Travel and Tours have spoken about their experience following a successful completion of Hajj in Mecca. And in international news, Gambia's neighbor Cabo Verde today celebrates 46 years of independence from Portugal. And celebrating 61 years of independence today is Algeria, which gained its independence from France. Those were main headlines. Now, the news in detail. In a flurry of engagements at the State House in Banjul on Wednesday, President Adam Abaro received Antonio Rediger, German and Real Madrid defender who is on a visit to the Gambia. As Alucis reports, the Gambian leader also held talks with delegations from OMVG Riders for Health and a FAB Foundation visiting delegation. Antonio Rediger, a German professional footballer playing as a defender for La Liga side Real Madrid, is in the Gambia to attend the launching on Friday of Senes Group Company Limited, which will produce milk powder and detergent products, and which is run by Abdul Salam Dukre, a Gambian and a relative of Rodriguez. Highly regarded as one of the best defenders in the world, the former Chelsea and Roma defender is known for his aggressive playing style, tackling ability, and strong aerial presence. The 30-year-old was born in Germany to a Sierra Leonean mother who fled the civil war in Sierra Leone. The 2021 Champions League winner runs a charitable foundation for education in Sierra Leone. Speaking to the press, Rudiger expressed delight at being in the Gambia for the first time and for meeting President Barrow, who is a keen football enthusiast and an Arsenal supporter. Um, yeah, it, uh, it came by surprise, uh, the interaction with the President, to be very honest, uh, because I, I arrived this morning in the Gambia for the first time ever. So, um, yeah, like my impression is, uh, as my brother told me, because my brother came many times here and uh, I have also family here. So they always spoke highly about the Gambia, and uh, so I wanted to see with my own eyes. And uh, I have to say the people here are very, very lovely. At the end of the day, like uh, anyone can choose to be fan whoever they want to. Like, um, yes, I, I'm, a, I'm a Madrid fan, obviously, I play for them. But uh, it's not bad that His Excellency is an Arsenal fan. I think they are a very good club, so he should keep supporting them. I know sometimes it's tough, but <laughs> it's good. President Barrow also received at his office a delegation of the Riders for Health, a British NGO that continues to support the improvement of the country's health sector. Barry Coleman, the founder of Riders for Health, said they are in the country to review the existing systems in a view to better improve the partnership with government. Next to meet President Barrow, who doubles as the chairman of the OMVG Conference of Heads of State, was Johnny Sio Kabi, Minister for Natural Resources of Guinea-Bissau, who also doubles as the chairman of the OMVG Council of Ministers. He was accompanied by Environment Minister Rohigion Manjang, the OMVG Line Minister in the Gambia, and Lansana Fofana, OMVG High Commissioner. Speaking through a translator, Lansana Fofana, High Commissioner for OMVG, thanked President Barrow for granting them the audience. Environment Minister Rohigion Manjang said the meeting was meant to report on the progress made in the OMVG projects, but also to seek the guidance of President Barrow for their subsequent activities. We all know the OMVG is of different components, but key component is the energy aspect, which has progressed very um, smoothly and successfully so far. Gambia and Senegal have 100% completion of the projects, and Guinea, the two Guineas have above 95% completion, with the expectation of the completing the project by the end of December this year. And aside, we also have the master plan um, development, which will bring in other aspects of agriculture, and making up key role of um, infrastructure when it comes to social economic development for that is linked to the OMVG energy projects. Since 2016, the OMVG project has been implementing important energy projects for the OMVG member countries, which has made a significant progress and is on the verge of completion. 
with a 1,677 kilometer of high tension power transmission lines linking Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, the Gambia, and Senegal, the energy projects will help promote sub-regional integration through energy connection. The last to call on the president was a visiting delegation of financiers from Saudi Arabia and Nigeria who are in the country to forge partnership with the First Ladies Foundation in the area of health and other critical intervention of the foundation. The group says it is inspired by the work of the First Ladies Foundation. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sise. Now, following the announcement of new measures to strengthen the agency's regulation and oversight functions, Esa Marena, the Deputy Executive Director of the Medicines Con Control Agency, told QTV on Wednesday that the implementation of the new precipitment inspection and testing of medicines from India will ensure quality, safety and efficacy. And Sumana Isunyasi has the rest of that story. Measures come into force following widespread calls for stronger regulations to ensure medicines and related products imported into the country are safe for use. This follows the death of over 100 children largely attributed to acute kidney injury, AKI, allegedly caused by cough syrups manufactured by India-based company made in pharmaceuticals. The Medicines Control Agency has now signed a memorandum of understanding with a reputable private laboratory, Control Laboratories Private Limited, an independent verification, inspection and testing company. S. R. Marena is the Deputy Executive Director of the Medicines Control Agency. He explains what the MOU entails and what companies importing medicines and related products from India would now be required to do before their products are allowed onto the market. They've been do, uh, providing such services for other countries. Um, so we came to know them through research and also through the Gambian Embassy from India. We have signed a memorandum of understanding with them that empowers them to act as a third agent, independent agent on behalf of Medicines Control Agency in India. We've also <coughs> signed a service level agreement with them. This service level agreement details the implementation process for the services that are going to be offered by control on behalf of MCA. This new compulsory pre-shipment inspection is bonded by the exporter and to ensure continuous surveillance, the MCA receives reports from the laboratory before the products arrive in the country, following which they too will cross-check for final confirmation. The Deputy Executive Director Marina further explains the impact this new regulation will have especially in promoting quality and efficacious medicines. Meanwhile, he reveals that the implementation of a new regulation starts today, Wednesday, July 5th, 2023. This inspection usually would involve verification of the shipment, <coughs> shipment documents. Uh, there is a whole checklist they will go through, and also physical quality inspection of the products. Because for products, before you even send them for quality control testing, you have to do physical quality assessment. If they fail the physical quality assessment, there is no need you waste resources to do the confirmatory or quality control testing in the lab. Furthermore, he says the MCA remains committed to fulfilling its mandate and that some key staff are undergoing training in various areas to ensure that they continue to deliver on their oversight function. We've been involved in um, these GMP inspections through Wahoo supported uh, initiatives. We've done some in several countries. So now we have at least three staff or so that are competent enough to be able to go on this recipient inspection and testing. And those staff also would help to take along others also to, in order to also train them. The Medicines Control Agency is mandated by law to, among other things, regulate and control the manufacture, importation, exportation, distribution, use, control of advertisements, and provision of medicines and related products, including herbal medicines, cosmetics, medical devices, and household chemical substances. Ansman Eso Nyase for KTV News. Gambian pilgrims who traveled with Tiwawan Travel and Tours have spoken about their experience following a successful completion of Hajj in Makkah in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Babu Karsise um, is with the Tiwawan Travel and with, with the pilgrims, and he filed this report. 
Besides fulfilling our Islamic obligations, it is also an amazing sight when millions of Muslims come together for one common spiritual cause. However, that is not to say that the pilgrimage isn't difficult and physically demanding. This is the first time these pilgrims have performed the Hajj. Osman Seka, a pilgrim with Tewaon Travel and Tours, explains his experience during what is called the journey of a lifetime. Very difficult, but we managed to navigate through those murky waters. Uh, obviously, we are here for a purpose, and we thank God that we have completed that purpose. I have learned to relate with people that I have never seen before. And we have lived in the most difficult conditions. And I think if everybody now takes that along with you to the Gambia, you will be able to be more tolerant to society. And all of us, we feel now complete. So what is now left is to go back and then redouble our efforts uh, to uh, uh, follow the principles uh, as laid down by uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Maude Sise and Type Ka also had a wonderful experience. I'm well, I'm VIP service mantra American at on the Maka. It's like ngaka wando le bondi nange. There is no VIP service during Hajj, so I have learned so many things that will remain with me forever. We are all equal. Whether you are rich or poor. We sleep at the same place and we became friends with people we had never met before. Dal is brought, so but the experience was amazing, alhamdulillah. Our experience during Hajj is that we should all be united because we are all one. We should believe that there is only one Allah. The Kaaba is a clear example that Allah is one. It shows that we should worship no one but Allah, and Muslims should unite and help each other. Without that, nothing will work. For Mariama Musa, it's all about Musdalifa. That night is like, it's a life changing to me. I understand that day that all human being, God creation, Allah creation is all the same. No matter how big you are, no matter how rich you are, even you are a king, you are a prince, you are a president. If you have so much money, it does, does, doesn't mean anything on uh, Allah's creation. We are all equal. That night was a night. Everybody lay down on the floor, on the dirt. It's a, it's a wonderful experience. So that human beings... We have to understand that we are all equal. It's a wonderful thing, and I'm hoping and wishing, pray to all the Muslims to come to Hajj. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. Despite the numerous challenges faced during Hajj, pilgrims focus on the endless blessings of Hajj rather than the challenges they encounter. These pilgrims are delighted that, by the grace of Allah, they have been able to fulfill the fifth pillar of Islam. Babu Karsise, QTV News, Maka, Saudi Arabia. That story by Babu Karsise takes us to a commercial break, but when we return, we have more stories for you. Don't go away. In go home choice. Home choice. Bagas Bouba. Moi def ligey bu baax te wo te soko jende dina la yobbu ci dir bu yag te du gawa yaxu ingo home choice ño len indil pepp xetu bagage jiddu way yi ngeen mëna jëfëndé ko ci seeni métier yi wa ñun in ko fi lén dé jiddu suñu bagage ingo lañ yombalé bagage bagage yi dañ ko ba quality bagage dañ lén jaay Bagas <laughs> Parce que quand on fait des bagages quality, ça garantit, les bagages sont bagages ni à 100 ni à 100 
QCL brings you the future with our ultimate bundles. Enjoy the best voice and data bundle plans in one package. Get unlimited data packages with flexible validity and enjoy what true internet feels like. Get 30 minutes of on-net and off-net calls with 5 gigabytes of data for just $350. Or get bigger bundle packages from 10 gigabytes to 20 gigabytes with over 100 on-net and off-net voice calls and enjoy the fastest internet speed in the Gambia. You can also buy one day, three day or even seven day packages and enjoy unlimited data bundles with uncapped speeds. Just dial star 343 hash today and experience the limitless capabilities of the QSO network. Star 343 hash should be your favorite code to dial now. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QSO, we innovate, others follow. To make sure your company's products and services reach your potential customers, it is essential that you choose the right channel for your marketing purposes. QTV has the widest reach locally and beyond, and we can give your business the visibility it needs. Call QTV Marketing on plus 220-324-4444 or email us at marketing at qtv.gm and take your business to the world. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, you're watching QTV News, and I am Asma Uba. Now, the Westminster Foundation for Democracy organized a two-day advocacy training workshop on Wednesday for elected and nominated women councillors from each of the councils. Lena Iguiniba reports. Women's political participation is crucial for achieving gender equality and fostering genuine democracy. The two-day advocacy workshop aims to provide training to women councillors focusing on gender and development to enhance democracy and good governance at the grassroots level, making local councils, particularly women councillors, more responsive to the needs of women and marginalized groups. Madi Jabate is the country representative of the Westminster Foundation for Democracy. With this training, therefore, we envisage that you, the women councillors, and the entire general council will gain adequate gender-sensitive knowledge and understanding and skills with which to begin to realize and respond to the specific realities of women and girls, including persons with disabilities. When we address the needs of women by ensuring that more resources, more goods, and more services go to serve them, ultimately, the overall conditions of society would improve for all. In the local government elections held in April 2023, there was a significant increase in the number of aspiring female candidates, resulting in more women being elected to local council positions. Out of 120 local council positions, 58 women received nominations and 17 out of them secured seats. David Belgrove, the British High Commissioner to the Gambia, emphasizes their efforts to promote women's participation in advancing gender equality and achieving democracy. Commonwealth and Development Office and the UK government launched their first ever foreign policy strategy on women and girls. And what we do is that, you know, very much part of that strategy is to support greater participation of women in, uh, in politics. A country can only succeed and develop its full potential when the skills, knowledge and talent of all its population are given the opportunity to flourish. Rahim Maliklo, Mayor of the Banjul City Council, and Safi Sankare Faraj, 
Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Lands, Regional Administration and Religious Affairs, stressed the crucial importance of ensuring women's representation. Democracy cannot strive in a society where more than half of the population is not adequately represented in decision-making positions at all levels of governance, as well as other sectors of leadership. It is therefore imperative for women who constitute over 50% of the population of the Gambia to be well represented in political leadership positions at all levels of governance. Let us foster a society that upholds the principles of justice, equality, and dignity for all. Let us work tirelessly to ensure that no one is left behind, regardless of their gender, disability, or social status. By embracing the tenets of gender and development, we strengthen the very foundations of democracy and good governance in our grassroots communities. WFD is actively involved in strengthening democracy worldwide. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall, they have been working with parliaments, political parties, electoral bodies and civil society to foster fairer, more inclusive and accountable political systems. Reporting for QTV News, I am Lena E. Gwenyuba. Let's now take a look at international news in a moment. Today, the 5th of July, Cabo Verde, also known as Cape Verde, celebrates its independence from Portuguese colonizers. The day was attained after a brutal independence war. Lol M. Kamara reports. Cabo Verde, a tiny African archipelago, an island country in the Atlantic Ocean, gained its independence from Portuguese colonizers. The country is off the west coast of Africa, with Senegal being its nearest neighbor on the African continent. Independence came following the collapse of the dictatorship in Portugal in 1974 in what was called the Canadian Revolution. This brought independence for Guinea-Bissau and Cabo Verde. Despite jointly fighting the Portuguese, the two countries chose different independence days. With a population of around 483,628, as of the 2021 census, is mostly of mixed African, a small European heritage and predominantly Roman Catholic. Cabo Verde's commitment to education stands as a cornerstone of its development, setting a benchmark for the continent. The country's comprehensive educational system, with its firm dedication to literacy and learning, has cultivated a well-informed citizenry, acting as a catalyst for socio-economic transformation. This has resulted in higher standards of living and growing opportunities for all citizens. Moreover, the country's investment in robust infrastructure and sustainable practices is a testament to its progressive leadership and governance. From renewable energy initiatives to advancement in healthcare, Cabo Verde's policies reflect an innovative and forward-thinking approach. The country is on course to become the first country in the world to be 100% reliant on renewable energy, wind and solar by 2025. Despite the challenges inherited in its geographical isolation, Cabo Verde has transformed these obstacles into opportunities, demonstrating a commendable resilience. This tendency, coupled with its commitment to education and development, makes Cabo Verde not only a beacon of hope, but a model for other developing nations. As Cabo Verde celebrates its Independence Day, it is not just a celebration of national sovereignty, but also a celebration of progress, education, and the power of resilience. Happy Independence Day, Cabo Verde. For QTV News, Loli M. Kamara. Happy Independence Day. Also, another country celebrating today is Algeria, which observes Independence Day annually on July 5th, commemorating the country's separation from France, an independence war which lasted eight years and ended in 1962, was one of the longest and most destructive periods in Algeria history. Loli M. Kamara, again. At the celebrations on Independence Day, there is a strong sense of national unity and cultural pride among Algerians. 
the flag, which is green and white, which represents Algeria's independence, is proudly displayed throughout the country. The public participates in parades, cultural events, and concerts. The struggle for independence lasted from 1954 to 1962 after a lengthy period of rising ethnic tensions. The battle for independence began when the Front de Liberation National FLN launched successive attacks across the country, targeting the French colonizers. Despite the fact that France won on numerous engagements throughout the war, the brutality of the conflict did not garner public support, alienating the Algerians and resulted in the international community withdrawing their support for France's control of Algeria. The two warring parties eventually signed a peace deal on March 18, 1962 in Avian France. Charles de Gaulle formally recognized Algeria's independence on Tuesday, 3rd July 1962. Algerian Independence Day was proclaimed a national holiday two days after sovereignty was restored. An estimated 350,000 to 1 million Algerians perished during the conflict. And despite 61 years passing, relations between Algeria and France remained difficult. The bilateral relationship was also strained by France's decision in September 2020 to reduce the number of visas issued to Algerian nationals by half. In reaction to Algeria's refusal to take back its nationals, France lifted the restriction in December 2022, while Algeria pledged to do more to cope illegal migration. France has at least made some symbolic gestures in 2020. The remains of fighters killed resisting French colonial rule were formally repatriated to Algeria. For all their differences, France and Algeria shared an interest in combating militant Islamism or jihadism in the Sahel, particularly since the end of the French military-led anti-insurgent operation Bakan in 2022. Moreover, in the wake of the Ukraine war, France also sees Algeria, one of the world's largest producers of natural gas, as a potentially important supplier of energy even if the technical infrastructure of the Algerian energy sector desperately needs an overhaul. In 2022, Emmanuel Macron visited Algeria, where he held talks with Algerian President Abdel Majid Tebboune to mend tides with the Northern African country. On this day, we wish them Happy Independence Day. For QTV News, slowly M. Kamara. Happy Independence Day to Algeria. Marfei, that's all we have for you on this news bulletin. Join us again at 10 p.m. for another news bulletin. Have a pleasant evening and thank you.